he wants to be everybody. You know, we always hear the old adage, and you know, we say it on this channel. You like the five people you hang around. Um, find be around successful people. Be around people that you know have a mindset to go out there and get it. And then you know, everybody wants to know, well, how do you find those people? How do you know? If People have that go get them attitude until you start hanging out with them. And then they say, well, you don't know who they are until after you get to meet them. But just like success leave clues, poor mindset leave clues also. And then today in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, four things that, of habits or people that have that poor mindset or that mindset of just barely getting by or that paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. And I'm not saying that oh, you got to avoid these people like the plague, but avoid these people like the plague. I mean, you go, and then, you know, the things that we talk about, you're going you're gonna to notice some of the things we talk about, probably in family members, friends that you already have. But if you want that goal to be successful and going out there and getting it, it's about surrounding yourself with people that have that same mindset. You know, you need that same mindset so you can stay motivated, so you can bounce ideas off of. But if you're around negative Nancy all the time, it's just holding you down and holding you back from the true goals because people that have that poor mindset, they will put their limitations on you and convince you that your ideas are not good. Your ideas may not be good, but you got to try them out first. But you don't need negative Nancy and the crew telling you what you shouldn't be doing. You should go out there and learn it yourself or be around people that motivated as you are to get your ideas off the ground. So with all that being said, we're going to start off today with talking about you know, just habits of people with poor mindset and, you know, different things they do. Alex, before we jump into this, you know, these different topics, do you got anything to say about, you know, just the ideal or the consortment of, you know, being around successful and poor people, poor mindset people and successful mindset people? Yeah, it's going to, it's definitely going to rub off on you with whoever you're hanging out with and, you know, these are the four topics and just reading them, they're already annoying me, but I'll let you, I'll let you finish off what you're saying. Yeah. And then, you know, the first, the first person, the first uh, one that you want to come up with is people that have that, you know, that poor mindset or that broke mindset is people that make excuses. They always have excuses. I don't have this because of this or I couldn't do this because of this. They always have an excuse why they couldn't execute. If they always have an excuse on why they couldn't execute, that is, that's their home guard. That's their thing. That's their shield to the world. Oh, I could just make an excuse, make an excuse. So if you hanging out with your friends and you talk about doing the business and you have people like that, that's always make excuses about everything they do, why they didn't get stuff done. You don't want to create a business with somebody like that because if they doing it in their personal life, you guarantee and bet your butt that they're going to do it in the business realm also. They're never going to have that go get them attitude, no matter how much you are. If I'm like, so let's say I got a poor mindset and Alex has these great ideas. And then he said, Hey, Hey Kirby, I want to do it with you. If I'm giving him excuses in my personal life of what, why I'm not getting stuff done. You think I'm not going to do it in the business realm also? Yeah. Excuse people that give excuses. They're going to continue to give excuses. And then those are the people that have that, that, you know, that broke, poor mindset, and they're just happy with getting by and barely want stuff done. Alex, what you got? Yeah, making excuses is a terrible one. I mean, we're both guilty of having done it, and it can be, it can be hard, especially as humans, you know, we, it's like a resort defense mechanism you know, your brain will constantly try to come up with a way to get you out of doing something that is actually going to lead you down a better path but as i've explained it before you kind of just have to force yourself into those situations you have to you have to look at the bigger picture and see what that you know whatever it is you're trying to accomplish what that is going to bring to you and your family and keep your eyes set on that goal so there's always a way to get something done and making excuses is just gonna it's just gonna set you back. Yeah. Number two is letting life consistently happen to them. And this is one that chaps my butt. You don't Alex, you you know, you get a you know a small percentage because I call you invent sometimes, but people reach out all the time, you know, 
asking about investment advice, all asking about what should they do with their money, asking personal finance advice, asking business advice, real estate advice. And then I'd be like, all right, let's let's meet up. You know, let's go meet up for coffee. Let's go meet up for drinks. Let's go meet up to uh, discuss. And then it's always an excuse. Oh, so we talk about budgeting. Uh, so if if I'm telling somebody, you know, budget, hey, you need to start, you know, save a percentage of your income. Oh, well, you know, this happened. Oh, this happened. Life always happening to them. Life is not happening to nobody else. But they, the money that they supposedly set for their budget or they want to get the business started, it's always some dramatic event happening every week or every time they get paid to start allocating capital to the next thing. Or when it's time to meet up to, uh, you know, start discussing things, it's always an excuse on, oh yeah, I couldn't find a babysitter. I couldn't do this. But magically, when it's time to go to the club, magically when it's time to go to the mall, go out to eat and do everything else that's non-productive, they always get it done. But when it's time to do stuff productive, there's always a life event that happens that always breaks it up. It's not a coincidence, people. So if you have people around you like this, it's not a coincidence. It's because they need an excuse so they don't have to change the lifestyle that they're in. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, life is going to happen, whether you're wealthy, poor, whatever. I mean, there's always going to be situations and you have to figure out how you're going to go about navigating life when those things happen, because the guarantee is it's going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. And some people have it way worse than you do. So if they can get out of their situation, why can't you? You have to constantly look for a way to solve the problem rather than just think, oh, I just have bad luck and be stuck in that situation. So constantly try to get out of, you know, what whatever situation life throws at you. Right. And and Alex, I'm not trying to bring in your personal life, but let's just use you for an example. Three years ago or so, when you started this journey, there was no way in heck you thought that, oh, while I'm on the journey, I'm going to have family and stuff moving in from out of the country. You didn't, but that event happened. A life event happened, but it didn't stop you from doing your goal. Okay, you deal with that life event and then you get back to the grind. But it's not, oh, life event, this life event, that life event, that. Oh, now I got to do this. Now I got to do this. To avoid you of what you're doing. That is, that's the difference. People always think a life event is more important than getting there. It, and they are important. Life events are important. But they use that to shut down from what they need to do and just, oh, I'm just going 100% focus on this life event. But the thing is, life events are always going to happen. So if you have people that's always, you know, coming up with some dramatic excuse of, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened, they're going to be like that the rest of their life. And I know it's going to be outliers out there that might come in the comment section and say, oh, well, well, I changed. Yeah, you're an outlier. The majority of people, they're solid going to be their whole life. And there's no changing them. So that's how that usually shakes out. And then we'll go to the third the third topic. This is one that chaps my butt. And I'm just going to say what the topic is, Alex, and then you can just go, go run with it. Is when, when you're discussing personal finance or people that need help or you're trying to help somebody, you know, live better than, you know, a little bit better than check to check. They always give the excuse, I'm too busy. I'll let you take it first. Thank you. Okay, I don't want to go too long on this one, but I hate the hell out of this one because I just use myself as an example. When I first met you, I knew that I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be rich. I didn't know how the hell to do it, but I knew that's what I wanted. And then I meet you, someone with all that experience, with assets, with a lot to show for, and... My thinking was, I'm not going to go to college and learn it. Here's one guy out of how many are actually millionaires. I'm not going to fuck this up. So I didn't care. Like, Kirby was like, hey, meet me here Saturday. Everything else, fuck off. I'm, I got to go meet Kirby. Like, it was like, that was what I set my focus on. So, yeah, if you guys want to, if you want to achieve something and you have the opportunity, it doesn't matter doesn't matter what happened it doesn't matter what comes up in your life nothing can be nothing can occupy you more for what your actual goals are and if you allow it to occupy you 
more than your goals, then you do not want it as bad as you say you want it. You have to dedicate yourself. I'm going to the second, I'm gonna get to the second part. Well, the first thing you said is second. All right. The, the crazy part to me about it is you're so busy, but you're broke. You're so big. So you're so busy being broke. Make that make sense. That is the craziest thing to me. So you know you need more fight on the financial landscape, but you rather just, oh, I'm just going to stay busy to be broke. Stay busy to be broke. If you're going to stay busy, make it productive in your life. And on the second part, Alex, he's not lying. We, when I first met him, and it wasn't, I ain't going to say it put him to the test. I mean, half halfway it did because I got to know how bad people want it. I got to know how bad people want it because I can't sit there and waste my time. I mean, I you know, Alex, we had these conversations. You talk to, you know, 100 people. Hell, I think it's about 1,000 people now. A thousand people about finance and you know bettering their lives. Only one person probably gonna listen. And I just was like, well, I'm just gonna see how bad he wants it. If he don't show up, then it's just I could wash my hands and I can go on and do something else. But Alex online, we used to meet up uh at the place around the corner for me. Um, I mean, literally for like a year and a half straight, me and Alex would have conversations at three or four in the morning. Literally. And I'll call him. I know his wife wanted to cuss me out. Here, and here. I was like, she'll love me later. But that's exactly what happened. I mean, now sometimes, you know, we'll send each other a text now. Like last night, I think he sent me a text like one or two or something like that. But I'm always on the agenda. I'm always on the agenda. If I'm awake, you can bet your ass that I'm looking at an investment, looking for something to acquire, uh, seeing what the market's doing. I'm doing something in the landscape of finance to make my life better. I know people are going to be like, oh, but what about... Free time. I get free time. I get more free time than you do. I can make as much time as I want to. When you're not dependent on the system, you can control your life whichever way you want to go. But Alex is not lying. That's exactly how we went for a year and a half. And I mean, we went strong. I mean, it was phone calls and I'd be like, and I called him like, I know your wife ready to cuss me out. I know she's probably ready to shoot me. I, I knew it was. But the thing was, he wanted it. He answered the calls and we got the and we talked. We talked on hours. It wasn't no just oh, hey, what's up? This was going on. Hey, all right, we talked later. We sit there, talked about a subject, broke down the subject from different angles, and went after it. And the thing is, is I don't want people, I don't want to be around people that their lifestyle is dependent on me. So I don't take people's money and invest it for them. I want them to have the knowledge because if if Alex was like, hey, man, why don't I just give you the money and you do it for me? So his level of wealth or how much money he make is dependent on me. If something happens to me, God forbid, I die or whatever, then his lifeline is cut off. I wanted to instill the knowledge in him so he can keep on going no matter what, even if I'm here or not. But all right, I know this video getting a little long in the tooth. So let me go to the fourth one. Alex, I'll let you start it off. Is... The fourth one is have the victim mentality. I know this is another one you like. Go ahead. I hate this one too. All of these I hate, man. But I understand this is just human nature. But people, you got to like, you got to be stronger than all of these. You have to improve yourself. The world does not care about anybody. You have to be the one that cares about yourself and take control. And the victim mentality is just not going to get you anywhere. And I wanted to bring this up, too, but I mean, like, for example, like, and it's not to sound heartless, but Kermit, you know, a couple of years ago, I lost two people, you know, due to death in my family. That didn't stop me from doing what I was doing. Kirby even said, hey, I know this is going on, you know, take a break if you need. No, it's like, I still got stuff to do. It's not gonna, you know, it's just life happens, but you can't, you can't let anything in life just hold you back and just push you into this victim mentality. It's not... What does that do for your life? It does nothing. It just holds you back. It's not going to advance you anywhere. So you have all these goals and then something happens and then you get stuck. Why? So victim mentality doesn't matter what kind of excuse or idea you're going to come up with to try and claim victim. Even if you were abused as a child, and if stuff happens, get over it, figure it out. It, you can you can be greater than all these things. And Alex, I, I'm not going to harp on it because you hit all the key points, but I do want to point out one thing. I'm so glad, so glad you mentioned that I said, hey, Alex, you know, you're going through this event, you know, take a break. 
So now everybody, everybody thinks I'm just cold and heartless. I did get my opportunity to take a break. It was Alex on his own volition that said, damn that, I'm keep going at it. So it wasn't Kirby saying, Alex, no, you ain't got to worry about that. You just keep on going. Don't worry about it. I didn't do it. So now for everybody that's watching that, you know, no Alex, no me. Um, I'm heartless, but I'm not that heartless. So that was all Alex by itself. But uh, yeah, the victim mentality. Uh, and, and Alex, and I told you this one a while back. Something that chaps my butt real bad is when in 2023, you know, we in 2000 and I hear people of, you know, African-American descent, black people, you know, my people, I hear them still say that the white man is holding me back. I hate it to oblivion. This is the half of the reason why we started this channel, half of the reason why we started the uh, other class, because I was tired of hearing excuses. I wanted to make sure I eliminated all the excuses that, no, it's not nobody else holding you back but you. And that's the thing that everybody still want to play the victim. This is not the 1840s. Nobody ain't been on a plantation in a long time. I haven't seen, and I do a lot of deals. I haven't seen uh, somebody, a white man, or anybody say, oh, no, that's a black guy right there. We're not going to deal with him. I know. I I don't see it. And, and that's an excuse. And that's that victimhood excuse to say, okay, well, I can play the victim so I don't have to do it. So that's that's one of the things. I wanted to remove all the excuses. There's nobody holding anybody back. The only person that's holding you back is you. So if you not getting the results that you want, it's because of yourself. Look at the man in the mirror. Michael Jackson right there. But look at the, look at the man in the mirror. And that's what I have. But Alex, I'll let you close it out. But that's what I have. So let me say, guys, uh, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Uh, if you got any comments or questions, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.